We're live on Twitch. We are live on Sensor Tube, where we should be anyway. And Sal and Via, even though they're sleeping over there on Rumble, they're just chilling on our catio. And we are live on Rumble as well. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is January 14th, 2024, our second live stream of this new year. And we're back to the map. We got some updates to do, change some colors, add some colors, and there's a lot of stuff going on. So it's uh, 2024 is going to be interesting. And the odds are we're going to be visiting this map often. Okay. So while we wait for notifications to go out i'm going to give you guys my little intro that i give everyone nicholas salutations hope you're doing well welcome welcome to our live stream i hope you're doing well i hope you're doing well gang if you want to know what this work is about irish man meng irish meng what's up chicho salutations irish hope you're doing well kudos to the irish for backing up uh, South Africa. I listened to the full presentation of uh, the Irish lawyer um, for the genocide uh, hearings on uh, Israel. And they did a great job. She did a great job. Very, um, usually I'm, I'm a, I think you don't want to be that emotional in court uh, for the little bit of experience that I've had and a little bit of, that I've read about. And uh, but she was very, uh, uh, very powerful uh, presentation she gave. So kudos to the Irish. Salute, salute. Gang, if you want to know what this work is about, I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash chicho, C H Y C H O. We're also on Substack and Subscribe Star. You're definitely welcome to follow us on those platforms, and I do share everything on all three of those platforms. Temporary Peace, how are you doing? Well, hello, 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 everyone. Salutations, salutations. We do have a gilded server. You're definitely welcome to join our community and share information, discuss, challenge, talk. Uh, and we'd have light topics, heavy topics, whatever you want. Uh, just an open forum uh, without censorship where you can, you know, share your ideas, right? We are live streaming on Twitch, on SensorTube and on Rumble. And hopefully at some point on uh, sooner rather than later, uh, BitChute and Odyssey, although God pops in, war is spreading, war is spreading, which is one of the reasons why we started this map a few months ago, because we knew war was going to be spreading. So we wanted to have a live sort of feel of why it was happening, where it was going and whatnot. Temporary peace, World War Three on the low burner. Some places pretty hot, some places pretty hot, depending on where you are. Gang, we do have a SoundCloud page uh, where we upload some of the audio as uh, of these live streams as podcasts, and these podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, whatever, right? And we do have a Twitter X page, Minds, VK, Gab, Substack Notes, and Getter. You're definitely welcome to follow us on all those platforms. Cheryl, how are you doing? Salutations, salutations. Yeah. Key, oh, key. Well, I'll put up the key. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Thank you, Elder God. There's our key for this map. <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I added uh, three commands uh, today on, uh, on, uh, on our live stream on Twitch. Mr. 22 on sensor to what salutations salutations welcome to our live stream good day brother and gang good day to you as well good day to you as well nup fps knup fps frames per second 
not frames per second when i subbed i only knew you enjoyed weed and pickling things i saw some of your youtube content and i was surprised it was political if it's off topic for today that's fine but if you think Zelensky is continuing the war for greed and he should have made a peace treaty with russia without getting their land back what do you think should happen to russia that isn't already happening what do i think that should happen with Russia that isn't already happening. Um, well, aside from a lot of Russians have died, 50,000 or so, plus or minus a few thousand, uh, that's horrendous. Aside from Russia being involved in a war, um, the the main result of and it is nato's aggression on russia if we go back to 2014 even before that um, and western ukrainians trying to commit genocide ethnically cleanse eastern ukraine of russian-speaking ukrainians and all that just is huge you can do you know we've got a command on twitch you can go pretty sure this command is there ukraine uh, so if you do exclamation mark Ukraine on Twitch right here, um, I basically say for a historical perspective on the Russia-Ukrainian war, please check out this excellent interview with Benjamin Abelo from RFK Jr.'s podcast, right? As for the war and the future of Ukraine, the following RFK, uh, RFK Jr. interview with Colonel Douglas McGregor is a great starting point. And this is just starting points, right? So I'm not sure what you mean, what should happen to Russia. So far, most of the, the, the main result of this war, aside from Russians dying 50,000 and half a million Ukrainians dying and Ukraine being devastated, Western world economically annihilated, demilitarized, uh, lashing out in all places in the world. Like basically, the I don't like war, right? But there's usually winners and losers in general and if you take this war situation forget about the carnage right just look at it as flipping a coin russia has won the western world has lost so i'm not sure what you mean what should happen to russia russia is stronger more influential economically more powerful militarily more powerful has a tremendous amount of respect in the global majority it, you know i hate to say war is negative but most of the negative from this war has been on the western world much of it on ukraine right much of it in ukraine i'm going to take these guys down gang um let me take these guys down and before we get into the nitty-gritty gang we got we gotta we gotta do something okay we gotta do something uh, pa, 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 pa. Uh, hey man what's up what's up availability how are you doing brother long time long time thank you for popping in and by the way uh fps uh, this is politics so you're definitely welcome uh to ask political questions or any questions open discussion um fps says it sounds like you were saying ukraine should just give russia the land for peace should russia really just be allowed to take what it wants russia tried to have peace for a long time for eight years while western ukraine was killing eastern ukrainian fifteen thousand of them in eight years fifteen thousand russian ukrainians eastern ukrainians the western ukrainians killed that includes men women and children right innocent people right they were bombing cities and they are still bombing cities civilians they were targeting civilians what do you think should happen russia for eight years tried to make peace minsk one minsk two right that one month after the incursion the special military operation as russia would call it they had a peace deal ready to be signed in turkey and then boris clown johnson on behest of the united states flew in there prevented the ukrainians from treat uh, signing that peace treaty and russia didn't want any lands initially russia was like look man just 
fucking treat the Ukrainians, uh, Russian speaking Ukrainians with respect, no apartheid state, don't discriminate against them, and no NATO for Ukraine. It's simple. And you have to look into the history, brother. Look, look into those two interviews. Look into those two interviews. Okay. Uh, let me bring out the chat for Sensor 2. Lark Bark, how are you doing, Sensor 2? Hey, hey, you all, and holy shit. What's up, Chicho? Salutations, Lark Bark. I'm sure you're familiar with the news with Gonzalo. Yeah. On that note, uh, gang, gang, gang. Gonzalo Lira. Gonzalo Lira. Rest in peace. Okay. It's something we talked about uh, when he was making this podcast, and we mentioned that he shouldn't be there. Uh, but I think what happened with uh, Gonzala was, um, first of all, he wanted to be there for his family, for his kids. Uh, so he stayed in Ukraine. And I think he was, uh, he thought because he was Chilean American citizen, American citizen, right? He assumed that the United States would protect him if the shit really hit the fan. Uh, it must be clear by now that the United States, the Western governments, don't give a rat's ass about their citizens, about us, right? Must be clear Australia doesn't give a shit about Assange. Must be clear that the United States didn't give a shit about Gonzalo Lira, right? Our governments in the West have their own agendas, and we are cannon fodder, right? We don't mean anything to them. So, Gonzalo Lira, we followed his work on our channel a lot. We talked about what he did, especially the stuff he was doing with the Duran. I used to watch every little, um, everything that he was putting up. Gonzalo Lira, actually, I got introduced to it through the Duran. Um, didn't agree with everything he said, but huge respect to him. Um, he, he did what he did because he wanted to do what he wanted to do, and he couldn't stay silent as... Uh, and if humanity, most of humanity, especially in the Western world, if we were around atrocities and we realized that our silence is the means, the reason why these monsters that rule over us are able to do what it is that we're doing, uh, that they're doing, then maybe all this war and death and carnage wouldn't happen. So huge respect to Gonzalo. Um, I'm going to pour myself just a little bit of Armenian apricot brandy okay it's just a little bit uh, usually don't drink this we just do it on a special occasion and this is a special occasion okay so if you have a drink if you don't doesn't matter gang salute to Gonzalo okay warriors come in all different types shapes sizes and he was a warrior okay warrior for humanity respect must be shown salute to gonzalo and his family okay may he rest in peace What a shame, what a shame. Nicholas, any man or woman that thinks the government is there for their good is foolishly naive, 100%, 100%. Availability, I think Western countries will help their citizens and care about them to an extent, but the level of geopolitics at play can ultimately change how they react. They won't compromise when it comes to helping Gonzalo Lira. Uh, who openly criticized the ruling government of America. Assange also is a um, uh, re relative to that, yeah, related to that. Mr. 22, no drink yet for me, cooking uh, brunch, but I'll be enjoying a strong beer my friend got me later for boosting their vehicle in the cold, uh, cold thing, uh, cold, not snap in Edmonton. Salute, 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 salute. Goofy, yo. 
FPS, I will admit, I don't know the history of that region um, very well. However, it sounds unrealistic that Ukraine was a real threat to Russia and Russia calmly allowed attacks for almost a decade before declaring war on Ukraine in name of defense and will now only accept peace if the gain gain. Uh, Russia never wanted land. Keep in mind, Russia is the largest country in the world by a long shot, 11 time zones, right? Second of all, uh, Russia wasn't threatened by Ukraine. It was NATO that was threatening Russia because they were putting, forget about the chemical weapons labs and all this, forget about all that stuff. A day, two days before Russia went into Ukraine, right? The United States, the vice president of the United States and Zelensky came out and said they're going to put nukes in Ukraine, that Ukraine is going to join NATO. That means if they put nukes in Ukraine, right, that means Moscow was in four or five minutes of being hit with nukes. That doesn't give enough time for um, deterrent to take into effect, right? So that directly threaten Moscow look into the history FPS you have to look into the history we almost went into nuclear war because Russia was putting nukes in Cuba in retaliation of the United States putting nukes in Turkey the reason the Cuban Missile Crisis came to a peaceful solution is be is because behind the back doors the United States agreed that they were going to remove the nukes they had in Turkey, right? If Russia would remove the nukes they had in Cuba, right? So they de-escalated. NATO has been constantly escalating, 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 escalating. They escalated to the point where Russia said, enough is enough. We're done, right? The global south the global majority, most of the people uh, that uh, uh, you know look into geopolitics, they're way more advanced, intelligent, knowledgeable about what's going on in the world than we in the Western world who have been brainwashed for decades upon decades. Right? Just consider the last 15 years. A mantra came out, Putin bad. Putin bad. Just like Saddam bad. Just like Iran, bad, China, bad, Afghanistan, bad, Cuba, bad, Venezuela, bad. Anybody that doesn't do exactly as the Western world demands of them is bad. And what does that imply? It implies that the Western world takes taxpayer money and Western citizens or any proxies like Ukraine and sacrifices their citizens because bad it's some of the lowest iq uh, level that humanity has ever reached and it's not just because the leaders the so-called leaders in the western world are some of the lowest iq leaders in the world is because we in the western world are some of the lowest iq citizens in history human history i am not kidding you right it is time for us to lift ourselves out of this insanity and the first thing to do is educate ourselves instead of propagating regurgitating Western mainstream corporate propaganda as you stated FPS I will admit I don't know the history of that region very well if you don't know the history of that region very well then what you are stating you do not understand it is 100% false right and there's no discussion further that we can have because you don't know the history of that region right i can't talk to you about calculus if you don't know what two plus two is right i can give you a little bit of an idea of what calculus is it's the introduction of time to mathematics but you won't really appreciate what that means if you don't know what two plus two is right now when it comes to ukraine and russia what this conflict is about and has been about for a very long time is beyond your comprehension because what you're regurgitating is basically western propaganda and that's not a good starting point for a discussion okay i hope you look 
listen to those two interviews I hope you listen to those two interviews Gonzala Lira Gonzala Lira sacrificed his life so we would be educated as to what was really going on here right show truth tellers some respect salute to Gonzalo Eduardo I don't usually drink but I'm joining you for Gonzalo salute Eduardo salute 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 um Ron Ron Sa Ron Sahota Ron Sahota what do you think is the future of America and the Western civilization Western world is in free fall economically more than that geopolitically we're losing influence around the globe like hardcore hardcore right hardcore right right now in Yemen people that Western world has been waging war on for over a decade and if you want to know I know you're on a sensor tube uh, uh, Rona but if you come to our twist channel Yemen oops Yemen we got a little command in I put a little command this morning in there let me see if I can grab this whole thing okay I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna post it on the chat in sensor tube uh, so take a look at hopefully this will come out is it gonna come out <laughs> I don't think moderate verified I don't think this is gonna come out not all of it anyway oh it is now boink oh how come it's not posting it oops okay it's not I can't post it on uh, basically it's two interviews from no oh because it's too big hold on I'm gonna kill one of them the one of them is Jer Jeremy Scahill here let me copy that oh come on you should be able to post that Boink. Oh, what okay sensor tube is not allowing me to post this stuff it's not doing it sorry you have to go to our twitch so it's just two interviews on what was taking place under the Obama administration with uh, Yemen right so just imagine the Western world with this proxy Saudi Arabia was waging war on Yemen for a decade right what did that do it brought Yemenis together made them stronger made them strong to a level where they're opposing genocide in Israel and the United States and the UK just declared war on Yemen so one thing we need to do since we're talking about this right uh, we need to update our map on this front and add UK is at war as well okay it's in a it's supporting war but it's also directly involved in war so let me just put this here we'll make it both colors so the UK is at war right so that's one update we need to do to the map and this is a reflection of what's going to happen to the Western world what is happening to the Western world we're on the decline and the global majority is on the up right the reason the Western world is on the decline is because we've allowed monsters looking to Epstein and if you want to look into who the monsters are that are ruling over us again there's another command we have that I put in this morning on sensor tube uh, not sensor tube on twitch where it links up to uh, article one article by Whitney Webb where you can go down the rabbit hole and you'll figure out who the monsters are that are ruling over the Western world and you'll realize what their agenda is and their agenda initially they were globalists that they want to rule over the globe everything they want the globe and everything in it 
right? Like Scarface in the movie. What do you want? I want the world and everything in it. That's what they wanted, right? It didn't end well for Scarface, right? It's not going to end well for us. We're on the same path, right? But what these monsters in the Western world have began to realize is they already lost the global majority. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't getting their hands on that. So what they're doing is tighten the noose around our necks, limiting our freedoms, which they shouldn't be allowed to do. As the saying goes, governments should fear the citizens, not the other way around. Citizens should not fear a government. You go around anywhere in the Western world right now, they fear their governments, right? Wrong way to be. So the Western world is not a happy place. We're in deep poop. Okay, and it's up to us if we want to free ourselves from uh, this monstrosity of bureaucracy that we forced ourselves to live under. Okay. The Liberty 88 on Sensitive. Cheers to Gonzalo with my coffee. Hello from a Vancouver Islander island in New York. Va oh, you're Vancouver Island living in New York. Salutations, brother. Salute. Salute. And cheers to Gonzalo. get out of there <laughs> what's a support war again support war means is funding uh, either through money logistics uh, supplies uh, it's supporting a war right so for example are there French soldiers in Ukraine some would say there are officially there aren't but France is sending weapons uh, funds money to Ukraine to wage war against Russia. So they're supporting war, right? A little Irish whiskey, yellow pinko says for Gonzalo. Salute to Gonzalo. Nostalgia. I like how you resist Western narratives that need more nuance than they make it seem. Example, Iran is actually doing relatively all right compared to what the West claims is going on. 100%. Iran, in the last quarter, had a growth rate of like 7%, 8% economically. What's going on in the West? We're fucking plummeting, right? We're plummeting. Artur Turk, brother, I hear you. Uh, but what's the solution? Solution is to hold our politicians accountable elder god you rock thank you very much elder god posted the links on sensor two the ones i was uh, linking regarding uh yemen okay the ones i was uh, linking regarding uh, irish mang thank you very much for the tier one sub appreciate the support brother thank you mm -hmm. FPS, I will check both of them out. From my point of view, NATO is mostly toothless. So I'm curious to learn how they are the aggressor. I'm also curious to learn how Russia's actions will be justified. NATO, NATO now is regarded as being toothless other than they have nuclear weapons. But NATO is not toothless, right? NATO has resulted, the aggression of NATO towards Russia has resulted in the annihilation of a country 500,000 dead Ukrainians hundreds of thousands maimed 50,000 dead Russians tens of thousands Russians maimed economic collapse of Germany economic demise of Europe United States running deficits that are last budget the best 1.7 trillion dollars canada is economic fucking wasteland now the homeless here are unbelievable how many homeless we have here meanwhile canada was sending six billion dollars to ukraine nato is not toothless in regards of how much destruction it's unleashing across the globe right NATO is toothless in regards to what it was hyping itself to be the most powerful military in the world, right? It's NATO is how many members? I don't know. It's got most of Western Europe, Canada, United States, Australia, New Zealand, I think is in there. 
Iceland is in there, which is like lowest IQ thing you ever saw in your life, right? You got to, I don't know how many countries in NATO and Russia just annihilated the NATO proxy army. So in that regards, yes, NATO is toothless, but NATO wasn't regarded to be toothless two years ago. Russia just showed the world that Western world is on the verge of collapse and it is collapsing is full of hot air and they are morally bankrupt because they're willing to sacrifice the lives of other people lives of other nations for their own selfish agenda the veil has been lifted and what we're seeing right now is the repercussions of what's happening right for example let's do another update let's do another update of our global map right here's another update ecuador is in civil war ecuador is in civil war is did this civil war in ecuador come out of the blue no no ecuador's fate was sealed when the clown puppet in a wheelchair that took over from the previous administration handed over julian assange to the uk police to the uk puppet regime so that the united states could put him on trial for the most ridiculous charges ever for espionage and all this crap right and try to extradite him to the united states ecuador's fate was sealed when they betrayed ecuador right when they betrayed ecuador they did this because Julian Assange was given Ecuadorian citizenship. He was living on Ecuadorian soil in the Ecuadorian embassy, considered to be part of Ecuador. This puppet government here handed over an Ecuadorian citizen for the guarantee that they would give, get IMF funds. I think it was $5 billion plus a nice bit of bribe money to the people who actually did this to the leadership right so a few million dollars to the puppets five billion dollar guarantee loan to ecuador which is basically saying that ecuador is going to be economically annihilated a few years later ecuador is in a civil war so what we're witnessing right now is any country that allies themselves with the western world is slowly being annihilated right we have examples ecuador ukraine right which other examples do we have take a look take a look right take a look at this map and see which countries are basically not having a good time because at one point in the recent in recent history they decided to ally themselves with the western world to be proxies of western regimes right not a good time not a good time right first time chat john proposal is not true as a kazakh i still see the us as number one number one in what number one in what availability furthermore i say the bigger russia the the bigger russia can expand the better for them no at some point you expand too far and you fail right that's what all empires do right but russia had no desire to occupy ukrainian land or 
incorporate the Donbass into and the other provinces into uh, into Russia, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean in terms of aggressive expansionism that people always tunnel into. To give more of an idea as to why territory is pretty valuable, Napoleon didn't actually um, lose most of his troops because of Russian winter. He lost them because of logistics. The winter didn't really have much um, effect into the casualties of war. Russia used scorched earth doctrine. They weren't afraid to burn their own land. No country is. The United States, NATO is going scorched earth on any country that might be deciding to lean towards Russia, uh, Russia and China, right? So the United States, the doctrine in the West has really been this for the last number of decades since World War II. If you don't ally with the West, if you don't do what the West wants you to do, they will burn you down, right? So they're not even going scorched earth on their own lands. They're going scorched earth on other nations, right? Uh, as far as expanding, no, there's a certain point where you don't expand any further. You don't, logistically, as you said it, right? Uh, meandering, meandering, sna meandering snails, how are you doing? Welcome back to our live stream. Chicho, I like watching your past streams and i don't usually get to chat a live stream but man i wish you weren't right at the time you weren't right all the time i'm not right all the time that's for sure i was wrong about uh, uh what do you call it madonna i thought she only would last 15 minutes and she's still around right chiha i hope that this ends with a light at the end of this long dark tunnel through uh through enough resistance it will it's i'm actually positive as to what's happening in the world i know there's a lot of people dying i know there's a lot of people being sacrificed but this is the growing pains of life right the growing pains of the world the veil is being lifted right all the bs that has been fed into western societies through corporate propaganda for the last 56 50 60 years is now showing itself for what it really was right what it really was i mean how many people knew about in 1954 muhammad Mossadegh, that the united states the cia overthrew a democratically elected government in iran installed a shah dictator that really built up to the point of the Iranian revolution in 1978, which has again culminated, right, snowballed into a level where Iran is one of the most powerful countries on this global map. Literally, Iran is more powerful now than pre-revolution. Iran is one of the most powerful countries in the world, not because it arms other nations and stuff like that. as iranians have said they don't have proxies like the united states has iran has allies right and iran has built allies over the last few decades through hard work through diplomacy through standing on the right side of history in in many regards right Iran is the reason ISIS, with the help of Russia and Syria, the reason that ISIS did not grow to be a full-on like, cancer in the Middle East that, would be, that could be used as a proxy on the whole globe, right? Iran, as they have, they have stated, they have allies. They don't have proxies. Who are their allies? Let's take a look. Russia, China, India in large part, right? Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon. Who else? Who else? Let's see. Let's see. Who else is Iran's ally? Is that enough to have allies? Well, man, if I was a person... And I had 
Russia, China, Houthis, uh, Syria, Iraq, Hezbollah as allies, man, I, I'd say I've done pretty well considering the pressure I've been under, right? The gang, gang, we talked about Assange. So do not forget, do not forget. Free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange, a publisher and journalist that has been crucified by Western powers for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. Something that we desperately need in our societies. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or countless resources available online. Salute to Julian again. Plutonic Pluris, good day to you on Rumble. Good day to you on Rumble. Let's do a little count. Let's see what do we got. We got 29 people on Sensor Tube. We got 28 people on 29 people on Twitch. And we got three people on Rumble. <laughs> Salutations Rumble. <laughs> and everybody else, of course. And everybody else. PPP Triple P Salvadoran A. Indeed. Salvadoran A. I'm scrolling down, gang. First time chat on Twitch. Free Israel. Why isn't South Africa bringing Russia to court? <laughs> bringing Russia to court. <laughs> what did what what has Russia done? Then what's happening in Ukraine is very different than what's happening in Israel, right? Very different very different pink qb hell yeah world war three map is back indeed availability russian is an empire though isn't an empire though this is what i mean by uh, tunneling into one view okay yeah russia is not an empire they've actually come out and said uh, the ussr was a mistake right lions salutations how are you doing from ireland what's up chicho haven't been able to enjoy a stream in a while how's life life is going good and lines i mentioned this earlier salute to ireland for uh, having a voice in the genocide hearings regarding israel uh, i listened to uh, the the representative the lawyer she and she did an amazing job presenting the case so salute to the irish for standing on the right side of history Lions, all you got. Just got back from your neck of the woods. <laughs> Spent four days in London. Lovely city, Lion uh, says. I'm scrolling down, gang. Availability. At what point do you consider Russia over expanding? Because there's many vi variables that can alter the view on over expanding. At one point, at one point, people probably thought the countries that it ex uh, exist now were overextended, but now they're what they are i guess uh, i don't think it can be simplified into just being over expanding this is looking at it uh from time no i disagree availability because russia came out and they said for multiple years that they have no desire to expand their territory they're big enough as it is they're the biggest resource country in the world right commodities right they came out for multiple years saying, look, man, we don't want war. We don't want war. Will you guys just please stop killing Eastern Ukrainians? Will you abide by Minsk 1 and 2? Can you please agree to what we agreed in the 1990s when USSR collapsed that NATO would not expand one inch to the east, which they did, right? For how many 1990s, 2000s, 2010s, three decades, Russia was saying, look, man, will you guys just please just fuck off? Just calm the fuck down. Stop coming at us. Stop coming at us. Right? NATO would not listen. It reached a point where they were killing Russian-speaking Ukrainians. And that was the line. Russia went enough. Is enough right and they stepped it up right it's like if you've ever been a, have you have you guys i'm going to ask you a question 
flowers child how are you doing and dancing vigilance sensor too i want to ask you guys a question have you guys ever been in a fight have you guys ever been in a fight right have you ha ha ever had anyone just constantly come at you just constantly come at you right constantly come at you I, have you think about it what would you do right for me i've had that happen to me multiple times more times than i would i care to care to remember and i'm pretty sure i've forgotten many of them right but there's a couple of things you could do you could stand your ground and go don't come at me mofo you could call your allies and have your allies stand behind you saying look man you come at me you come at everybody right you can constantly step back and say look man no fight no fight no fight and walk away right or run away right or at some point when the person's coming at you and they're backed you up against the wall which is what they're they've done nato went from here to here this is russia got it this is russia right from here russia was saying stop coming our way stop 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 at some point when they come at you when your back's against the wall you take your elbow and go Poof! knock them right in the chin right if they have anybody else there you knock them with one you hit the other guy you kick the other guy you call your allies and you go fucking ape shit on them right and you don't stop until they're on the ground bleeding right that's what you do that's what Russia did. These dumbasses thought that Russia didn't have the ability to do that. Their fucking mistake, right? Unfortunately, 500,000 Ukrainians dead, country annihilated, 50,000 Russians dead. That is war. Stop waging war. Lions, Julian Assange, I'm assuming, saying trial or witch hunt, witch hunt, witch hunt. Chico Chu TV salutations on Twitch. First time chat, you la 32. Why USA have red mark if there is no war there? Well, they are at war. USA just bombed the shit out of Yemen. Yemen said, fuck you. Right? USA is at war. USA is at war here. We already know that U.S. soldiers, general, U.S. general, was killed in Ukraine, right? USA is at war. Not war, really. USA is committing genocide in Israel, right? They're supplying the weapons. So just because it's not on U.S. territory, it doesn't mean they're not at war. They're at war, right? It's just the empire is at war. That's why. I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down. If there's anything directed towards me gang please let me know um i think i'm missing a lot of chat i'm just gonna try to get caught up with the twitch chat first time chat kakada kakada what do you think about the bricks most people are sure they would fail because the members don't like each other though i don't think that's enough reason uh to believe that yeah i think it's succeeding beyond their wildest dreams it's not gonna the western world their geopolitics is, oh, I don't like you, so I'm going to wage war against you, right? That's a child lashing out. Oh, I don't like you, I don't like you, oh, I don't like you. So I'm going to stop dealing with you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wage war against you, I'm going to get some proxies to attack you, and shit like this, right? That's the Western world. They think geopolitics is about like, right? The global majority realizes geopolitics is about trade. So the BRICS nations don't have to like each other. They just have to realize that there are better alternatives than waging war. And what is that alternative? Trade, right? For example, if me and you are, let's say we don't like each other, right? What's the best way to prevent us from fighting each other? Well, if our economic future is tied together if we decide to do business together or 
buy and sell from each other, then there's less incentive for me to try to kill you. Right? That's what the BRICS is offering the world, really. BRICS has stepped in and said, listen, we don't have to like each other. We don't have to like our societies. You guys could be religious. You guys could be secular. You guys could do whatever F you want to do, right? Because we're not here to project our moral beliefs on you, which is what the Western governments have done, right? Western societies projecting their moral beliefs on the rest of the world, right? Just the lowest IQ thing you ever, you, you ever, you could ever come up with, right? This, these clowns projecting to the rest of the globe that they must do whatever that they think is the right thing to do, right? You could take multiple examples of what they think right and i'm not going to say it right BRICS nations are saying no we, we don't care about that we want prosperity for our country for our citizens right and we want to do business you have something that you make you have access to something you have people you have resources you have technology that we'd like to do business with you trade with you right you can keep whatever society you think is right for you your people however way you want to function that's okay with us and we won't project our moral beliefs on you BRICS is on the rise the West is collapsing that's what it is right Irish daddy Bush called it in his chicken Kiev speech the world didn't want to listen violence sensor to chicho what are your thoughts on the on the devil symbolic literal evil evil exists uh devil depends what your definition of devil is uh to me i would say the devil is evil and evil exists in the society 100 percent right plutonic plurus on rumble i think philosophically still that that every imbalance creates its own counterbalance so to speak for every for, uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction uh, the western imbalance on the world stage gets balanced currently for better and for worse maybe and for worse maybe right Pe people people wing fly around something like that <laughs> on twitch have you talked at some point about recent transformation of Salvador? I don't uh, mean today about Bitcoin. Uh, I don't want to uh, detract from the topic of world conflicts, but I'm interested if it ever came up. If it did, I'll look it up on YouTube. Uh, we haven't really isolated Salvador yet. Salvador, I believe the uh, the president of Salvador is introduced Bitcoin a few years ago as a legitimate form of currency and they've been investing in it which is a great investment opportunity <laughs> smart right smart i think salvador did this and what that has done is freed salvador from the control of the western world economically and i believe salvador is seeing some of the most peaceful period uh, that it has for decades if I'm not mistaken, I haven't gone too deep into Salvador because there's so much other stuff going on, but that's from uh, just going by memory. But I could be wrong on this uh, fly around. Uh, please, please share share what you think uh, and what is it, what it is specifically you're pointing to, right? Lions NATO always poke the bear and then point fingers. Yeah, for me, I wrote an article back in mid 2000s. That World War Three, oh, really started with Georgia, okay. With the war in Georgia, and I titled it uh, the uh, the West uh, uh, Western World Awakens the Sleeping Bear, and that's where World War Three began, 
right? And it did. That what happened in Georgia woke up Russia. And from that point on, Russia has been preparing itself for what happened here and with the BRICS and everything, right? I think Georgia was the event that really kicked things into gear for Russia. Okay. Wow, do you believe in possibility of a literal devil? God or God or evil existing? There are no gods. That's even what comes in. There are no gods. <laughs> Some people say we are the gods. A, 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 an individual that is the devil. Uh, you know, I like my comic book stories. I like Neil Gaiman and stuff like this. But even Lucifer is really just one uh, from Neil Gaiman's story with the Sandman and stuff like this. Even Lucifer is just one powerful being in a greater realm, right? So if you want to narrow it down into your little bubble and say the 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 most powerful evil person in this bubble that I live in is called the devil, I'm going to call him the devil or her the devil, then by all means, you're allowed to do that, right? I'm scrolling down, gang. I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down on Twitch. Anyway, a lot of chitter chatter on Twitch. Uh, I'm going to see if there's anything directed towards me. A lot of people talking together. Da, 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 there it is. Lions, Chicho. Just a remark for the map. Ireland is stepping closer and closer to civil war revolution. I think so too. Uh, there has been escalating violence between mobs and police. And in, in November, uh, and in November, gone there was a massive riot in Dublin that involved the army. Oh, that involved the army. I didn't realize it was involved the army. But yeah, I agree. I think all of Europe is going to go into civil war, right? Especially the countries that are linked up with the eu right as we mentioned before france in a civil war is just the beginning and this is a quiet civil war it's just brewing brewing just constantly just there there just on the verge of just exploding right but once it goes i think we're going to see it all over the place i think we're going to see it all over the place uh, so that's my take i think i think the western world is on fast track to civil war okay some places will be more intense than others now look at germany what's going on in germany right now right huge 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 right i'm a big boss on sensor tube god does exist but he won't be here to save you when uh, society kicks the bucket <laughs> you'll have to save yourself <laughs> That's individual. There are no gods. That's why there's no one uh, to us but ourselves. Gozimoka. Gozimoka on sensor too. What should we expect from the DR Congo in the next five to ten years? I think the, the Congo is just going to stay the way it is. It's, it's going to take a lot longer for the Congo to stabilize. A lot more time anyway. We need to stabilize. Like what's going on here is actually we should switch this up now because niger is no longer at war niger won the war okay so let's take down niger as a war okay let's take this down because it was on the verge of war it was in war being threatened by its neighbors right but france just a few weeks ago left uh, uh, niger so let's call niger let's bring it down a notch let's say civil war for now okay let's say civil war for now because it's not settled yet right uh i don't think the west is done with it yet right. they will try to escalate the situation and create more chaos but for now the west has been expelled from niger right so that's a better sign right that's a better direction can't be against people wanting independence uh, kokoda uh where is it what could trump do to revert that revert that 
in his uh, in his government he left a bunch of scars having to do with american image internationally yeah but way less scars than the biden admin or the obama admin or the bush admin or the clinton admin or bush senior admin before him right uh yeah yeah yula 32 you 32 is talking about taiwan because taiwan just had their elections and they elected a pro-western government again right but if you uh, listen to alexander uh from the duran the duran people one thing they pointed out the pro-western government in the previous election had 58 percent of the vote and in this election they only got 40 percent of the vote right and they had to form a coalition they have to form a coalition to be the ruling party in taiwan and the pro china party gained in percentage right so agreed they made a mistake in electing a pro western government right but their support is diminishing here's the problem though that's a dangerous time this is an extremely dangerous time for Taiwan because the West is now realizing the United States, it's mainly the United States, is realizing that their puppets in Taiwan, the parties that support, want to be pro-Western, are losing ground. And the parties, I guess you want to call it Chinese puppets, the party that is supporting China, that wants to be closer to China, is gaining ground, right? And the only way the pro-Western party is allowed to form a government is they, if they form a coalition with the other parties. What does that mean? Do we really think that the United States is going to stand idly by and allow the influence of the party that wants to be with the United States to diminish to a level that in the next elections, the pro-China party will win, right? Because they will. They're increasing in popularity while the West is decreasing. Will it happen next election? Yeah, I think it'll happen next election because next election, if it happens in four years, by that time, the Western world is economically annihilated. It really is, right? So it's dangerous because I don't think the United States is gonna stand idly by and not allow that to happen, which means they're gonna start shit up. That's my guess. So some people were saying China's gonna buy at their time and they, they were planning to just wait, wait it out. And Taiwan is China's, it will be, it's done. The whole world recognizes Taiwan as Chinese, that's part of China. There is no country, including the United States, that considers Taiwan to be its own country. They don't, right? So China's plan was to just buy time and at the end, Taiwan will be pro-China because it's the main trading partner, right? Pro-China and that's it. Taiwan becomes Chinese, just like Hong Kong, right? But I don't think the United States is going to let that happen. Um, I think they're going to go scorched earth on Taiwan, which is extremely dangerous period, extremely dangerous period. So I think war is coming to Taiwan within the next four years. I hope, I, I wish it wasn't, but I think it is. I think it is. Ch -ch -ch. But I agree with Kokada, right? If it, if a region of a country wants independence, they should be allowed to have independence, right? For example, if Texas, right? If Texas wants to secede from the United States of America, which it might, right? Then they should have the right to do so. End of story. A people living in a certain region that want independence, they should be allowed to have independence, right? Just like the people in Donbass, they wanted autonomy. Initially, they didn't. They just wanted their language not to be banned and for the Western Ukrainians not to bomb the shit out of them, right? But Ukraine said no wage war. Russia stepped in. Bum, bum, bum. Now we are where we are, right? So any region that wants independence should be allowed to have independence. End of story, really. Uh, I'm a big boss on sensor tube. Chicho, which continent do you think will decline uh, decline on their population the most by 2030? Uh, which which continent or which country? 
which continent is going to decline the most? Uh, Europe, Western Europe, anyway, right? Um, excluding Mexico from North America, North American continent, but it is as part of North America. Uh, I think this area world Canada United States I think we're going to see a population decline um, because immigration has peaked in my opinion or mass migration has peaked uh, I don't think with the next government that is going to be coming into Canada uh, in the next year which is going to be the conservatives I think they're going to stop the floodgate of mass migration into Canada I think it's reached a point where there's a lot of people that have flooded into Canada. They're looking at Canada going, we can't live here. This is crazy expensive. The government is tyrannical. Uh, homeless everywhere. Job opportunities are limited. Uh, we're out. So there's actually mass migrants that are leaving Canada, right? Because it's not the promised land that, that they were promised. So I think uh, Western Europe is going to see a population decline. decline. Um, as long as it could get a handle on the mass migration. Okay. As long as it can get a handle on the mass migration. Uh, Soundy Club, Chicho, what is the story of the conflict between Morocco and the Shuari people? That's the, that's the one here, right? Uh, I believe... If I'm not mistaken, this is something that I followed. Man, it started really big in 10 years ago or so, I believe, where they wanted independence and Morocco was not allowing them. So they sent their it's an occupied territory. Basically, it's occupied land. And the people here don't want Morocco uh, to have control over their their land and their society. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been following it past that, right? Uh, the only other thing I know is Trump gave this area to Morocco, just the way they gave the Golan Heights. Trump gave the Golan Heights to Israel. Yeah, right? Clown, right? Clown. And Trump stepped in here as well. And Morocco and Israel are our allies, I believe, right? Morocco is... Uh, sort of a puppet regime of the Western world. That's that's as far as I know. Um, I haven't looked into it beyond that. Okay. Brev89 on sensor tube. Are you able to explain the situation between Palestine and Israel? Because I'm confused. Oof. <laughs> um, am I able to explain it? Uh, in short form, man. Uh, where do we begin? Where do we begin? Uh, you can't start on October 7th. You can't start with the first Intifada in two, 2000. Basically, in short, uh, in 1947, 1948, uh, there's a declaration that gave split up Palestine, historical Palestine, which was under under. Uh, the British Empire into two different parts. 54% or something went to Israel to establish an Israeli Jewish state, and 46% or so was to establish a Palestinian state for the indigenous population. The people that took over that region, the Zionists, because we're Zionists, with the coerced the Western world because of genocide of World War II, we deserve a land, right? And the way they sold it, they sold it as uh, land for a people with people without a land. No, what was it? Uh, basically, they sold it as if their, their mantras are, are low IQ, to say the least. They sold it as, oh, there was nobody living there, right? But the promise that they made to the Western world was that when they went there, they would give equal rights to everyone. Everyone would have equal rights. Well, they went in there, they did the great Nakba, they 
expelled a shitload of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians from their home. They killed a shitload of people. It was genocide, ethnic cleansing the region, right? And they created hundreds of thousands of refugees that flooded into Jordan, Syria, Egypt, and into the Gaza Strip and the West Bank and into Lebanon, right? They set up a serious base in Lebanon, okay? And this was unacceptable to the rest of the Middle East, especially the Arab nations. They said, hey, listen, you can't just all of a sudden British Empire comes there and gives this a land that's occupied by indigenous population to just the Jews and most of them just European Jews, many of them not even Jews to begin with. They were Zionists, were a sect of Jews, European Jews that surprisingly had their origin in the Ukraine, right? That all of a sudden come in there, expelled an indigenous population, mass refugees into the neighboring nations, destabilizing, destabilizing those regions, right? For a while, they try to come to some kind of agreement that, hey, listen, everybody should have equal rights. The, the Zionists can't, you can't ethnically cleanse the region. Palestinians said, what the fuck is going on here? Who are these people that are just kicking us out of our villages and homes and taking over our lands and killing our people, right? And then there was a war in 1967, right? which was sort of a, you can look into it, right? And then the Western world steps in and says, oh, we're going we're gonna to put the United States and the UK in charge of bringing peace to the region. We're neutral parties. We're not taking sides. The United States is not taking sides. They're not taking sides. And we're going to try to bring peace to the Middle East by creating a two-state solution, right? Israel and Palestine, right? And then they take over. Zionists get more power mainly through the 1970s, through the neocons and through the Reagan administration, Bush Jr., the Dave Camp Accords and all this jazz, and they, you know, promise Palestine, uh, um, their state. Meanwhile, in the 1980, Israel goes into Lebanon, bombs the shit out of Beirut because the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, was based in Beirut and they said okay PLO can't be there so they bombed the shit out of a whole city that was known as the Paris of the Middle East right because they want the PLO out of uh, Beirut and the PLO ends up going to Tunisia right and then they they start funding the extremists and stuff divide and conquer and whatnot the whole the United States is a neutral uh, neutral country that is going to try to help bring peace to the Middle East and create a two-state solution. The veil has been lifted and everyone knows now that the United States was not impartial. They were 100% Zionists, as Joe Biden said. He's a Zionist, as uh, Blinken says, a Zionist. Just fund the shit out of Israel to continue their ethnic cleansing, right? And in the mid-2000s, or 2000, there was an intifada, there was an uprising of Palestinians saying, look, man, we can't live in an apartheid state because it had become an apartheid state. Right, so Israel was functioning as an apartheid state for a number of decades in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s, full on apartheid state, right, just like South Africa. And then there's an uprising with Intifada 1 and 2 in the 2000s, right. And in the mid 2000s, the Gazans were allowed to have elections and they elected Hamas, and Hamas origin being Israel, Zionist. It was funding Hamas because they wanted to separate, they wanted to break apart the one Palestinian government, right? From the West Bank and Gaza, they figured they could divide and conquer, right? So there was elections in Gaza, they elect Hamas, which is really a resistance movement. People uh, in the West are being lied to that it's a fanatical, genocidal, religious bond. You, you could be non-religious and join Hamas as long as you resist occupation and apartheid, right? That's in their doctrine, right? So in mid-2000s, they have elections in Gaza Strip. Hamas gets elected. Hillary Clinton comes along and says, well, we shouldn't have allowed free elections in Gaza because they elected the wrong people. Oops. D democracy? What democracy? Right? So as soon as that happens, Israel... Right, and by the way, before that, they occupied Gaza, they brutalized Palestinians, they murdered them, they raped them, they organ harvested them. They were taking Palestinians into prison and harvesting their organs and selling them. Israel has been one of the largest uh, black market organ human organ suppliers to the world for decades. Right, 
whose organs? Palestinian organs, right? But we won't go down that rabbit hole, right? So as soon as Hamas gets elected in the Gaza Strip, Israel says, democracy, no democracy, right? U.S. says, no democracy. Western world says, no democracy. Gaza goes under complete blockade. Israel controls its water, electricity, food. Palestinians, fishermen, are not allowed to go beyond a certain amount of distance off the coast to fish for food, right? It reached a point where Israel was did the calculations of the mathematics and said, oh, there's this many Palestinians living in this region, and you could survive on this many calories per year. So they allowed a certain amount of calories per person to go into Gaza, right? i.e. Gaza was turned into a concentration camp, right? Concentration camp. And this continued. Uh, IDF sniping people. They tried multiple peaceful means, Palestinians, to try to break this blockade and finally get the land, the nation that were promised in 1948, right? Decades ago, right? What are some of the things they tried to do? They did peaceful march. Israeli snipers sniped them, killed uh, healthcare workers, nurses, paramedics, children, shot them in the knees, shot them in the head, annihilated them, right? Peaceful march, right? They started the BDS movement, boycott, divestment, sanctions movement, which is a peaceful movement, saying to the world, look, if you don't, you don't support Israeli apartheid, that Israel is holding Palestinians hostage in the Gaza Strip as a concentration camp. If you don't support what Israel is doing, if you don't support an apartheid nation, just like people didn't support apartheid Africa, Africa, don't buy Israeli products that are made in occupied territory. BDS movement, boycott, divestment, sanctions movement. What happened? The Western world called that violence. Get that. That's huge. Right, so Palestinians peacefully protested, got them shot, got them killed. They started an economic sanctions regime. Like you, as a consumer, should have the right if you see a company that you don't agree with. For example, Coca-Cola having death squads, hiring death squads in Colombia to kill anyone that was an activist that was going against Coca-Cola siphoning out water. But, but maybe I won't buy Coca-Cola products. Right? What happened? Western governments came along and said, oh, anybody that supports BDS movement is supporting violence. United States went as far as saying that any individual, any corporation, any national or international corporation that wants to do business, that wants to work for the United States government, or its states must sign a document saying they don't support BDS movement. You follow? That includes teachers. So teachers in the United States, in most states, as far as I know, if they wanted to teach in elementary school and high school in an education center, they have to sign a document saying they don't support boycott divestment sanctions right which is crazy just wrap your head around that right so palestinians tried everything peaceful to try to break this blockade free themselves from a concentration camp and finally get what the world promised them which was a nation right under un resolutions Everything should go back to the 1967 border and Palestinians who were made refugees should have the right of return, right? Well, it wasn't going anywhere, right? The Western world was helping Israel to continue to commit genocide. Then we have October 7th. What happens then? Oh, the Western world is actually arming the genocidal regime of Israel to ethnically cleanse and genocide a whole people in Gaza, and they're going to go after the West Bank next. They're going to go after Lebanon next, Syria, Egypt, Sinai. They want the region, Saudi Arabia. They want a greater Israel. So where we are right now is the veil has been lifted for the majority of the world, global majority, because pre-October 
seven, uh, there were still a lot of people that didn't know this history and still thought that Israel was, you know, the most idea was the more most moral army in the world. I don't know what reality that's from, right? Western corporate propaganda, right? And now that the global majority, including people in the Western world, are seeing what Israel's doing, what the West is doing in support of Israel committing genocide, the veil has been lifted and we realize who they are, which is the monsters they have been for decades for decades we just brushed it under the rug saying well world war ii genocide holocaust bad let the chosen people do what they want to other people well that shit ain't flying no more right that shit ain't flying no more that's the quick version if you want a longer version what you want to do is Norman Finkelstein. Let me see if I have a command for this. Gaza. Nope. Palestine. Nope. Uh, if someone reminds me in our Gilded server, uh, on our Gilded server, I'll put a command together for uh, on Twitch for Gaza and Palestine to provide information to Norman Finkelstein and uh, Max Blumenthal and Aaron Mate as to what's going on in that region and give a little context and history okay and again take everything i say with a grain of salt but majority of what i said is um, pretty much fact and very few people deny it other than psychopaths okay real xenomorph will remind you thank you thank you thank you well, Chicho, is Illuminati a real thing? And what is it exactly? Yeah, for sure, it's a real thing. Think of it, uh, Trump called it something else, deep state. Think of it as Epstein Island. It, it, it's, it's, it's a branch. It, it's, it's just a term that they use to cover uh, the, 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 the select few people that are ruling over mainly the Western world right now. Okay, the monsters. I call them the monsters. I call them the monsters. Ron Shahata, Shahota, Chicho on Sensor Tube. Who do you see as future world powers? Do you see migration from Western countries to global south in the future? Western, yeah, 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 for sure. This is already happening. Uh, when do you see the world order changing? The world order is changing right now, and we're seeing mass migration from Canada out into Mexico, into Central America. Like, we're seeing that right now. I know people that have moved out of Canada because Canada's a tyranny, it's economically collapsing, there's homeless all, all over the place, inflation through the roof tyrannical government right they froze people's bank account for making a five dollar donation to a peaceful movement grassroots peaceful movement or an organization that represented them right so right now we're not seeing the same type of mass migration we're seeing into the united states from latin america all these places and other places actually it's not just latin america there's something seriously going on here right into Europe and the United States, but a lot of people are, want to, again, brush it under the rug and don't look at it. Oh, we don't want to talk about this because it can't be real. No, it's real. It's real, right? But right now, there's a ton of people leaving Canada to get out, right? But the movement is a little different because the people coming out of Canada and the United States leaving and Europe, they're coming out with money right so they're going and buying land in a lot of central and south america to try to find a safe haven because they want to be near water they they want to live flush right and you can right the mass migration we're seeing into the western world is different very different very different Brev89, thanks for explaining that, Chicho. Definitely clear, cleared it up for me. Uh, my pleasure, Brev. My pleasure. Uh, again, look into the stuff, right? 
Sean Boolean on Sensor 2, what kind of attacks do you see coming in the US? Whew. A lot. There's a lot happening. There's a lot coming. There's a lot coming. Um, okay, I'm going to read the availability. I'm just at the bottom of the chat on Twitch gang. Uh, actually, let me read Plutonics on Rumble first. Plutonic. The Western imbalance on the world stage gets balanced currently. Uh, oh, yeah, we already read that. Availability. You assert that I have no idea what I'm talking about because you thought I was living in the US. Uh, no. Availability. You're using your claim position to appeal to discrediting my word. What words? Which ones? Uh, availability. Oh, you're talking to someone else. Okay, good enough. Okay, good enough. How are we doing for time? Oh, wow, we're already an hour and a half in. And gang, again, again. Let's do a little salute to Gonzalo Lira. Right? Salute to journalists, uh, to all truth tellers who are being brutalized, murdered by tyrannical regimes and their accomplices. Salute to Gonzalo. And again, if you want to get a feel for for Gonzalo Lira, who he was, I got a little. We got a little command in Twitch. If you go exclamation mark Gonzalo, and we don't have to be live streaming for you to do this. You can go to our Twitch channel anytime you want. Put an exclamation mark Gonzalo, and uh, there's an amazing, amazing sort of uh, tribute or sort of remembering by Alex Cristoforo from the Duran of who Gonzalo Lira was and uh, what he represented and what happened to him, right? And uh, the reason that he stayed in Ukraine and uh, what he tried to do, okay? Uh, really, if you knew, if you're following Gonzalo Lira and his work uh, just on his own channel as well as his collaboration with other people, um, it'll make your eyes watery it'll uh, it'll it'll make you shed a tear okay salute salute real xenomorph this previous year has been very bloody for the journalists very bloody for journalists look at how many journalists israel is killing in gaza and the west bank Whoa. mind boggling and what are the Western clowns doing? They're supporting that. Guess what? If these Western tyrants are supporting a genocide in Gaza, what do you think they're going to do to us that we live in these places? Right? You think they're not going to do the same to us? Wakey, 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 wakey. Right? Wakey, 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 wakey. Tammy Raby, watch Coach Red Pill for three years. I miss him. Yeah, he opened my eyes to truth in Ukraine. So does Eva Bartlett. Indeed, Eva Bartlett's amazing, amazing. A Canadian journalist, indeed. And uh, um, Eva Bartlett and. Uh, Oh, I forget the other uh, female journalist that is absolutely amazing. Uh, oh, I forget her name. She's at the same caliber as Eva Bartlett. And just to, just to let you know how tyrannical Canada became, Eva Bartlett, a journalist, independent journalist, amazing journalist, was traveling outside of Canada when Canada started seizing people's bank accounts arresting people charging them with stuff for peaceful pro, like peaceful things eva bartlett was afraid to come back to canada so she stayed outside of canada for a number of months or a couple of years i'm, I'm not even sure if she's back yet because uh that's how tyrannical canadian government went right that's how a tyrannical canadian government went 
Kafmet Fika Chicho. I'm from Sweden and thinking about Central America and South America. So you're you're right about that. I don't want to be in NATO and this puppet state of world economic uh, economic form you yeah. Yeah. If I was living, I've mentioned this multiple times for a number of years now. If I wasn't living in Europe, I'd be looking to get the F out. Really. Um uh, I live in Canada and if we didn't have elderly here that need our attention we'd be getting out maybe i'm still fighting for the good fight here All right let's see if we can put those tyrants in jail and change our laws so we can bring back capital punishment and deal with them All right Uh, Lark by Gonzalo Lira deserves a tremendous amount of credit. Unfortunately, the history books won't remember that. I think they will, Lark Bark. I think they will. Okay. That's what I'm asking. Uh, what are you asking, Sean Bullying and Martial Law? Yeah, there's like Canada declared a state of emergency because people were protesting their mandates. Like a government, just just check this out. This is a democratic government, right? Democratic, supposed to be democratic government. All of a sudden, declaring a state of emergency because people are protesting in the streets, right? On mass, right? The largest protest in Canadian history, grassroots. Like there was no major institution funding. It wasn't a Soros color revolution. This was full on grassroots. This was. Probably the biggest grassroots protest movement in decades in the Western world. Like, really, it just exploded, right? Because Canadians going, what the F, right? You get these mass protests coming up and the government declares a state of emergency because they're afraid of the people. As the saying goes, People should not fear their government. Government should fear the citizens, right? Uh, Ron, who are the future global powers? Russia, China, Iran. That's three. Okay. That's three present global powers. These three countries are massive, huge. Seven, eight percent growth. Four, five percent growth. China, I don't know what the growth is right now. They might go through a little bit down period, but it's not changing, right? Those are three. There are others. There are others. And the Western governments, collapsing. Okay. Cheryl, then friend, be careful making statements about the U.S. and other Western nations. Okay, people are talking there. That's good. Uh, Keanu Weaver, how are you doing? Uh, where would you go? Ask the trick question right mexico is is one place but it's got to be a safe place in mexico and personally right now i'm not looking into moving because we have an elderly here right so if if we're two years away two three years away from uh, being able to do a move i start looking into it but i can't look into it right now latin america is it is the first place i would look for look look to um and doing that, I would seriously hardcore uh, start learning Spanish fast, fast, fast. Okay. The other place, Russia. Russia's future looks absolutely amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And Yoaku says as well, India, superpower, superpower, right? Yeah. Agreed. And it's, it's not the military that makes it a superpower. It's the economic factor of it that makes it a superpower. Europe is done. Why? Because economically it's collapsing. The United States is not economically collapsing yet because it's printing money up the yin yang. It's got the global reserve currency, which you can do, right? Canada is economically collapsing, right? It's got a lot of resources, but your resources don't mean anything uh, if you don't have proper management, right? So it's my take. Dancing Vigil. Off to work for me. Thanks, Chicho. My pleasure, Dancing Vigil. Thank you for popping in. Salute, gang. Salute. Uh, 
availability all right i'm gonna go fun stream for discussion good to catch a live stream thank you for the uh, enjoyed uh talking talking with i hope i provided some level of discourse to make the stream for sure availability. thank you very much for popping in thank you for popping in truckers truckers russia's uh, can we russia's future is looking amazing why because it was a question mark two years ago with nato waging war on russia russia stood its ground not only that as soon as russia was kicked off the swift right people had their eyes on russia to see what would happen in russia russia didn't economically collapse not only that russia is a resource superpower the country with the most amount of resources in the world it is now becoming a manufacturing superpower geopolitically it has influence around the globe now and connections around the globe right it's made allegiances that are so solid right now it would it protected syria from collapse it has now allied itself with saudi arabia and iran just imagine china stepped in brought these two together which have the united states has been feeding off them their animosity right with the help of israel right israel never wants sunni and shia to come together china and russia just brought them together oh my wow right so russia's influence geopolitically is probably the best regarded country in the global majority than any other country there's no doubt but western forget western europe they're clowns forget canada united states australia and new zealand clowns forget japan is just a puppet regime right in the rest of the world russia is highly highly regarded because they got some of the best diplomats in the world they made tra trade agreements with so many different countries right they've proved themselves to be militarily untouchable untouchable they've proved that technologically they are way more advanced than anybody gave them credit for they've proved that they are untouchable for at least two decades right it's going to take a long time for the western world to catch up to russia militarily okay and the west that used to control much of the world is losing power look at what happened in niger look at what happened in mali niger and mali just kicked off france done bye bye right who's there russia right thank you very much for the twitch prime sub lob shorn salute salute they've subscribed for nine months currently on a one month streak salute brother or sister of course Chicho, have you been uh, talking about anything about the USA elections coming up? Can it change anything for us? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. It can change. The one poison in the United States is Israel, right? Because all the candidates support Israel, right? Eliminate Israel from the from the situation, right? If the Democrats get in, get in again, United States is done. If Trump gets in, United States status will rise on the world stage. And maybe Trump can dig the United States out of his hole. Maybe, maybe. He is still a puppet to a certain degree, but he did make some right moves. We've talked about this before, right? Democrats get in, done. So the this US elections is probably the most important US elections in US history. No doubt about it. Right? No doubt about it. But we see. But we see. Mods, thank you very much for taking care of business on Twitch. I'm not sure what was going on, but thank you. How about Argentina and Brazil? I think Argentina doop, doop, is in a civil war. Okay. Brazil is quiet period period right now. We'll see where it goes but civil war might be coming to brazil as well one of the problems with latin america is is the monroe doctrine the united states is losing power everywhere in the world and 
the Americas is going to be the one of the last places it uh, lets go of. So it's going to go scorched earth here before it does anything else. So that's dangerous as well. That's dangerous as well. But Argentina is collapsing. It has already collapsed, but it's going to collapse further. Right? There's major turmoil coming to Argentina. Brazil might follow suit. And Venezuela, uh, Guyana, right? We'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens there. Keanu Weaver on uh, sensor to the wall. All that sounds amazing, Chicho. It's still unfortunate that I'm not able to enjoy my cannabis or be with my boyfriend in Russia. Seems uh, despite such a f uh, freeing future, I would be very restricted. Yeah, I agree. Major problems in Russia as well, right? But compare it to what's going on in the West, right? when 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 like for example consider russia in the 1990s it collapsed right if you knew it was collapsing you wouldn't want to be there in russia in the 1990s unless you had an in and you're making profits from that collapse which that's how the russian oligarch came to be they were put into power by western governments right so I would not recommend living in Russia in the 1990s. The West is facing the same type of thing for the next decade, right? Nicholas Chicho, just a troll coming out of its bridge to engage as one brain cell. Like, thanks, Nicholas. <laughs> Hilarious. Che uh, love, love kamute yaga. What is that? Chicho, what uh, are your thoughts about the Balkans? Serbia versus Kosovo, Bosnia versus Republika, uh, I can't pronounce that, and the uh, ties of Serbia with Russia and China, yeah, it's in trouble, right? Also, what do you think about the prospects of Turkey? Uh, huge. Uh, I think we're going to see possible war break out again, unfortunately. I think Europe is going into collapse mode. So all the shit that comes with it, right? All the shit that comes with it. Uh, Serbia has been playing its cards extremely well, extremely well. But it doesn't border Russia. So the support it can get from there is limited. And uh, unfortunately, EU is not done with Serbia yet. So I think that's going to war is most likely going to break out. Turkey economically is in deep poop, deep poop. And uh, it's been trying to play both sides, right? But I don't think it'll, it'll outlast uh, Erdogan. I think Turkey uh, quite possibly, quite possibly uh, might see it break up if things go in a certain direction, right? It's lost 95% of its value of its currency in the last 10 years, right? Uh, Erdogan has waged war all over the place in Libya, in Syria, in Iraq. Um, where else? There was some other place they waged war on. Um, so they're just lashing out. Erdogan is a, is, a, is a clown. Oh, yeah, Armenia. What am I saying? They waged war in Armenia. So Turkey has basically attacked all its neighbors. The only one that it, it hasn't attacked yet is Iran because Iran came out and said, Look, Turkey and Azerbaijan, if you try to take armenian territory away not nagorno karabakh but if you try to break the border between armenia and iran we will engage in support of armenia and prevent you from doing that and turkey backed out right but turkey and azerbaijan were about to enter armenia in a hard war right and iran prevented them so turkey i think is in trouble i think turkey is in trouble and rightfully so because the fucking the Erdogan is a monster, right? And he's a puppet as well, a monster puppet, right? If you want to think about it, right? Wow, what are your thoughts on Finland? Oh, Finland, <sighs> what a bunch of clowns, cokeheads, just marching Finland into fucking annihilation economically, uh, right? What, why, why? So stupid, so stupid. Mr. 
Carmine man. So when you say Europe is collapsing, what do you mean? Tens and tens of millions will die, suffer, possibly if it goes to a hard war, by economically collapsing. Europe, the life expectancy in Europe and United States and Canada is going to start going down. Its economic power is diminishing. Violence is going to kick up. Homelessness is going to kick up. Uh, tyranny is going to kick up. So collapsing. That's what I mean. Uh, yeah, Mr. Carmen, that's what we mean. That's what I mean anyway. I've been here 20 years. Don't see one sign of collapse. You don't see a sign of collapse? You, you don't see Germany being locked down by truckers and farmers as a major issue, right? You don't see Germany being decentralized as a major issue, uh, de deindustrialized as a major issue. You don't see Europe, Western Europe, losing uh, energy, uh, security as a major problem. Europe is collapsing, no doubt about it. Elder God, Europe is falling apart from the inside out 100%. 100%. I mean, my personal day to day life, just Mr. Carmen, uh, Carmen, man, read the poem by Norman Muller. First day came just because it's not affecting your day to day life right now. It doesn't mean your neighbors not a feeling it, your friends are not feeling it, your relatives are not feeling it, your state or province or country beside you is not feeling it. Europe is on the downtrend in a big way in a big way right first time chat server silver green 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 ninja i see the signs of america's collapse yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent. indeed 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 gang how are we doing for time gang i'm gonna pour myself one more drink uh for gonzala lira okay And oh, I have a comic book haul here too, gang. Okay, it's going to be a quick comic book haul. What if I'm gay and my boyfriend can't fit it? <laughs> Man, we're talking about what and a little, little. What did Nicholas call him? <laughs> one, one cell troll pops in for that, gang. Salute to Gonzalo Lira. Man, it was a pleasure watching him live, sharing information. He was one of a kind, right? He was one of a kind. Uh, and he was kind, right? And he spoke the truth and his truth. And a lot of things that he spoke came to be. So huge respect to him. And his, his life uh, was taken away from him by a tyrannical regime supported by another tyrannical regime that didn't care about their own citizens so our condolences to gonzalo lira's family uh friends loved ones and his kids right because that's one of the reasons he stayed in uh, ukraine um uh, wish him well in whatever wherever he is he ends up uh it was just a pleasure witnessing Everything happened in real time, except for his demise. Salute, Gan. Shit, I watched so so many of your vids, and the first time I'm able to catch a stream. Yeah, catch your stream. I'm just stuck buffering. Oh no, man! So sorry to hear that. Uta, first time chat, man. I hate my shit shitternet. I've watched so so many of your uh, vi uh, VODs videos, and the first time I'm able to catch a stream, I'm stuck buffering. Oh, sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Ch -ch -ch Gang, before we end the stream today, let's do. Uh, quick comic book haul okay quick comic book haul good thing I looked down one little guy one little guy okay one little guy you want to guess what this is you want to guess what this is this is a cheapie okay I got it at a great deal I would have paid higher for this 
But the reason I got it, uh, yeah, his voice, Gonzalo's voice will continue to be heard. Haul him up, haul him up. I've got a kitty cat just woken up, sharpening his claws. Okay, let me show you this. This is something that I ended up buying. <laughs> Nicholas, cards, cards. I paid $5 for this, and the shipping was $15 US. So this thing ended up costing $20 US, okay? <laughs> the guy's written it on here. <laughs> check it out, check it out. Uh, and it was a small time seller, and uh, my bid was higher than what I paid. But because it was going through eBay's global shipping program, I wasn't going to pay too much higher, right? But I'm glad to have this because I've paid higher for these cards before, and it was a good deal. Coup d'etat, the assassination of JFK trading cards. Assassination of JFK trading cards. <laughs> oh my God, Batman comics. We'll get there, brother. We'll get there, right? So the... So the deck looks great. So we have a handful of these now, which is great. We've done the readings for these. Okay, there should be 36 cards here. We're going to do a count, right? We've read all these very important cards. You learn more about history in these cards than you will in any centralized indoctrination center. Doing the card counts. 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Very nice, very nice. Very nice, very nice. Very nice, very nice. One, one of the cars I love about this is uh, the Marilyn Monroe one is beautiful, just beautiful. There's some amazing artwork in this. And again, we've done the reading for this. There's a playlist on SensorTube, and it's available on our all of our video sharing platforms. Uh, so much history here. So much. This one is amazing, too. Take a look. Ooh, let me put this here so we don't lose it. Okay. Check this one out. We talked about the Cuban Missile Crisis, right? Fidel Castro with a missile in his, in his mouth, right? Absolutely beautiful. Here it is. Look at this card. This card is beautiful. I would love to expand this and make it into a huge poster. Absolutely beautiful. I really like this. This, I think, is an amazing image. Right? Beautiful artwork, beautiful artwork. Right? Look at that. And the art is done by Bill Sikowinski, one of the great comic book artists. Legend, really. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And this one is fantastic, too. The Untouchables, look at that, right? J. Edgar Hoover, look at this monster. Look at this monster. Right. Beautiful cards. Very happy to have another set. Okay. Uh, historical piece. Historical piece. Coup d'etat. Five dollars for the cards. $15 for shipping. <laughs> crazy, crazy world, gang. Gang, let's call the stream. If memory is right, the art on number 14 is great. Let's check out, let's check out the art on number 14, Nicholas. Oh, yeah, this one too. Look at this. David. Fairy, theory. Stephen, STF, roll, riddle. Hello, I came right at the end. Damn, yeah, you came at the end. You 
came at the end. Calling a stream, calling a stream, calling a stream. Great stream, great stream. Nice discussions, gang. Uh, gang, if you wonder what this work is about, we are on Patreon, Substack, Subscribe. Sorry, definitely welcome to follow us there. We do have a gilded server that you can join, share information, participate in discussions. We are live streaming on Twitch, on SensorTube, and on Rumble. And hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll be live streaming on BitChute and Odyssey as well. We do have a SoundCloud page where we upload uh, the audio of some of these live streams uh, to soundcloud.com forward slash Chicho as a podcast. And these podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform. And we do have a Twitter page, Twitter channel, Minds, VK, Gap, Substack Notes, and Getter. You can definitely follow us there. And gang, as always, as always, thank you for being here. Salute to the mods. Cheryl, Nicholas, our God, Plutonic Pluris, somewhere out there on Rumble and Twitch, and everybody else, gang. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a fantastic week. Stay safe, stay safe, stay vigilant, stay vigilant. And gang, again, again, one last time, one last time. Salute to Gonzalo Lira. May he rest in peace. Bye, everyone.